Hi there, Laura here, the founder of Get Organized HQ, and I want to talk about what you can do when you're not feeling very inspired or motivated to tackle organizing projects or cleaning or even just the day-to-day maintenance of your home so it doesn't get out of control. And I do want you to know that if you're feeling this way, you are not alone. Tons of people, myself included, often find ourselves not feeling super motivated. So here are some hacks you can use when that happens to you. One strategy that works really well for me is pairing a task that I don't love with something I enjoy. And this works for not everything. If it requires like your mind to be focused and it's probably not gonna work, but for a lot of the mundane type things like folding laundry or even exercising, going for a walk, tidying up, you can listen to something at the same time and it doesn't take away your focus. So pick audiobooks, podcasts, music, and do that at the same time. If you really wanna make it effective, pick a book that you are only listening to when you're doing chores. The thing that I personally use most often to get myself going is what I call the two minute rule. So a lot of times what I'm resisting is just the getting started. That is the hardest part, whether it's like getting my tennis shoes on to go for a walk or getting my clothes on to go on the spin bike or just getting started with washing the dishes. So I tell myself, all right, you only have to do it for two minutes. Like I can do anything for two minutes. So that that forces me to like get ready, do the thing and do it for two minutes. And I would say that 90% of the time, by the time the two minutes are up, I don't even notice, like I keep going. Like I'm already washing the dishes, why not keep going? That happens 90% of the time. And then another 10% of the time, like I am just not feeling it. So I stop and I take a break and sometimes I, I stop until the next day if I'm really not feeling it. But that two minute rule gets me going a lot. One reason we often feel not super motivated and energetic is that we spend a lot of our day sitting. So especially if you're like me and you have a desk job or you're in the car a lot and you're just spending the day sitting, that kind of leads us like inactivity kind of begets more inactivity. So when I'm just sitting all day and staring at a computer screen, I'm not feeling super energetic. So building in some time for me to get some physical activity in, whether that is cleaning and I kind of like to break up some computer time with some cleaning and that's also productive or going for a walk or bonus anytime you can get actual sunshine, I find that very motivational. So even when it's cold here in the Midwest, it does get very cold, uh, super cold today, but I still like to put on my coat and get outside for even five minutes to get some of that sunshine. Routines and habits can sound, yeah, kind of boring, but they really are effective in helping you not even need as much motivation. So the more often you just do the same things in the same order consistently, the less you're even gonna have to work on convincing yourself to do it. So for example, if you have like Zilcho laundry routine and you just kind of do it whenever, then whenever you need to do it, you gotta go through this like, I'm gonna do it now, I can maybe do it later. And then you gotta convince yourself to do it versus if every single morning you go in the same order, you know, like you get your coffee, if you drink coffee, I don't even drink coffee, but you know, you get your coffee and then the next thing you do is you press start on your washing machine. And then the next thing you do is you go brush your teeth and then you go dump the clothes in or something like that. The more of a routine you have, the less motivation you're even going to need. If you're really working on building a habit or if you feel like you're consistently struggling to get motivated with one specific thing, then tracking your progress can be an excellent tool. There's all sorts of different ways to do this, but my favorite is just to print out a tracker. We have tons of these in the insiders. And if you are in the insiders and we don't have one you're looking for, ask us to make it and we can get it made really fast. And I like to literally like hang these up where I can see them because visual cues are also very helpful at creating a habit and reminding yourself of it. And I know it sounds small, but even the act of like checking off a box or like, you know how kids have those sticker charts? I even like, like, like adults like it too. It's motivating to be able to build those chains and to be able to check it off every time you do it. So even something as simple as a chart to track your progress can really help with motivation. Rewards are another great way to get over the motivation hump. So you can say, for example, when I finish washing the dishes, 
I will sit down and watch my favorite TV show or something like that. That would be like an immediate reward. Or you can do longer term rewards. So after I wash the dishes for 60 days in a row, I'm going to buy myself a new purse or something like that. So rewards can be another way to stay motivated. When it comes to starting or making progress on projects, a lot of times we think the problem is motivation, but it's not really that. It comes down to what a lot of things come down to is that we have too many decisions and we don't know where to start. So if you have a, a big project, like let's say that you want to have a yard sale and you're just like, well, I need to work on my yard sale or my garage sale. And it depends on what part of the country you're in. In our part of the country, we call them yard sales. But you, that's not very specific. How do you know if you did it? What are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to go through your stuff? Are you supposed to start pricing stuff? Are you supposed to you know, uh, start making the sign to advertise the yard sale? Like, There's a lot of steps. So break those projects down into small manageable steps and then decide which step you're going to do. And as a bonus tip, I encourage you to work on the step until completion. So what is not as effective, and some, sometimes we just kind of tend to do this, is to like start something and start something else over here and start something else over here. Like often we get in the habit of when it gets hard, we just kind of stop and we go to something else and then you're not gonna make progress. So you want this to be an achievable step, something that you can get done and you can truly cross off the list. So if it's not something you could do in whatever amount of time you have, whether it's 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, then it's too big and you need to break it down further. So like for example, if it were that you needed to write 10,000 words, you're probably not gonna do that in two hours. So you might break it down into write 1,000 words. Or if, it's, if you're writing a book, for example, you, would, you wouldn't, that, that's not where you would start. You can't start writing. You would need to create the outline first. And even that might be too big if you haven't nailed down the topic. So you need to break it down so that when you come to do it, you know exactly what you need to do and you don't have to worry about that decision. Accountability is huge huge for getting things done. So if you have somebody who's going to know whether or not you did it, who's going to be checking in on you and cheering you on, you're far more likely to do it. So pick a friend or an accountability buddy to do this with you. Or if you don't feel like you know who that is, we have lots of motivation and we do things together as a group in the insiders. I'll put a link down below to that if you want to check that out where we kind of work on things together, but make sure you have someone to help keep you accountable. If all else fails... I remind myself of what is called the think, do, feel train. I did not come up with this idea, but I heard it from someone else and I thought it was just absolutely brilliant. So you're like picturing a train and here's how it works. A lot of times we are waiting until we feel like doing something. So I'm sitting on the couch waiting until I feel like washing the dishes, which may never come, right? That's not how it works. First, we think, I think, I need to wash those dishes. I can think of 8 million benefits to washing the dishes. I can think of consequences that would happen if I don't wash the dishes. Then I start doing it. So from my logical thought, I start the action of washing the dishes. After that, the feeling comes where I'm actually not hating it. I'm like, oh, this isn't so bad. I can wash the dishes. So we, don't, we can't always expect our feeling of motivation to come first. Sometimes we have to start doing the thing and then the feeling of motivation will come. So when all else fails, that's what I remind myself of. And I cannot tell you how many times that has gotten me to do something because I'm like, okay, I have a, an incorrect expectation. I'm just expecting to feel motivated. I'm expecting to feel like, yeah, I would rather get up and get on my spin bike than watch this movie. Well, that, that's rarely going to happen. But like I said, 90% of the time, once I'm on that bike and I'm going and I'm like listening to some music and I'm feeling good, then I'm like, oh yeah, I'm loving this. I'm glad I did this instead of just sitting on the couch and watching a movie. So keep that in mind when all else fails. Another thing that helps me a lot with motivation is when I'm not staring at this like huge list of everything I need to do today, knowing that I can't possibly get it all done. And what I use for that is called the three bucket system for planning my days. Super simple, total game changer. And I'm going to leave that link to a whole video where I describe that down below so you can go check that out next.